Hey guys, back at the shop today. Uh, got a update story about uh, what's been happening in the shop in the last few weeks. You've seen a couple of the vehicles that we've gotten in here. Uh, Cadillac and the T-Bird. So, uh, there was a, what, what was the, it was a, an inheritance, a fella, fella that inherited, <clears throat> excuse me, a bunch, well, this is the third vehicle that, that we've received to get running and it's all part of the same inheritance as the Thunderbird. Inheritance estate, that's what it was. That's right, that's right. Uh, so yeah, this, uh, 99 Mustang GT. This thing is pretty sano. It's got 78, just about 78,000 K on it. Uh, so <laughs> four, six. Four, six, single overhead cam. This thing's been sitting, it sat outside for 10 years. And they got it running out at the, uh, at the uh, estate site. So it's your standard, well, it's not your standard because it's actually a 35th anniversary edition car. So you got the 4.6 single overhead cam, five speed. Uh, it's probably got a pausing in it, I don't know. It does have a pausing. It does have a pausing, yeah. okay. So we know that. Um, they brought it down to us to just go over it. Uh, thing needs brakes all the way around. Calipers, uh, rotors, pads. The whole. Uh, they're sticking like. This, this tire is off the ground right now, and it's, I've taken it all apart already, loosened it all up, greased it all up, everything was good, hit the brakes once, and the, the caliper is just locking up, so. So not good? No. You know what that would drive like? So we got our whole parts collection for that uh, over here. Oh, we're also this putting. also getting a clutch. Yeah. Um, clutch and clutch <clears throat> cable. Because the clutch cable seems to be uh, sticking as you go through the throw on the uh, on the clutch pedal. So there's, there's a new cable, bracket, uh, release bearing, pressure plate, or uh, yeah, pressure, pressure plate and disc. And that, not sure what that is. Actuator of some sort. And for your, to the cable for your cable. Yep. Yeah. So we also have to find out what the flywheel's like, and in order to do that, we gotta pull the transmission, obviously, even to find out which one we have. The, from the research we've done so far, there's two different diameters and two different teeth counts on the ring gear. And there, there's no inspection cover that we can take off in there to uh, even, there's a little, like a, a 3 sixteenths of an inch by three inch little space, you can stick a light in there and then you can try and start counting, but forget it it's not gonna it's happen. gotta come out anyway yeah. so it's just a matter of whether we get the, the flywheel machine or can find one ford doesn't make any more flywheels for these guys right and we found one from uh parts of the napa guy in town they've got one in a different province one so we're gonna find out the condition of this when we get it out you guys will see that uh when we get to it and then we're either gonna make a decision that that's the right one that they have for us or we're gonna get it machined so we'll let you know when we know. So that's one of the cars. Uh, this It was sitting outside for 10 years? Yeah, so the, it was sitting under a tree. So it's kind of hard to tell. Come on. I'm not really worried about rubbing dust into it because it's going to get painted, but it's bubbled up and, and something very corrosive is eating away at it. It's going to be a simple, simple fix because it's a single panel. The trunk looks fine other than you know, being dirty. It was sitting under a tree. There's some pine needles here, I think, in the corners of the windows. Uh, a couple of leaves. Yeah, it's under a pine tree. Just whatever. Just little bits of little bits of crap laying around. But it's a very nice uh, looking car. We got to figure out the uh, the Viper alarm system. Oh yeah. It's that thing's. It cuts pain. this thing. The the siren's been cut, disconnected. But the lights are flashing constantly, so we gotta we gotta back trace and unhook it because it's just a pain in the pain in the butt. We gotta yeah. we gotta un un uh, unarm it to start it. Exactly. So fully loaded, 
35th anniversary car. It's got all the gizmos in it, power, power, you name it. And uh, yeah, other than that, it's it's a completely stock in yeah, amazing you, condition. You can see it's it's freaking out now because we opened the door. Yeah. So so to fix that, we got to cancel that. There it's we on. go. Now it's good. Till I slam the door. Oh, it made a liar out of me. All right. Okay, good. I'm not the only one. So, just going back here. So the Cadillac, we're still waiting for a couple of parts to show up. Uh, if you've been watching our videos on all these different guys here, uh, Power Antenna decided to hit the road on us during the last repairs that we were doing on it when we did the brakes and everything. Yeah, this, this one sat in a, in a semi-trailer since 92, I believe. Yeah, 30, 30 years. Yeah, almost 30 years. Totally we did all the brakes on it. Uh, had to flush, had to flush. Had to flush the brake lines because it, it looked like coffee coming out of them. It was really dirty, yeah. So, new calipers, rotors, pads, front and back on this one. Uh, runs like a top, put new tires on it. New tires, only guys we can get tires from because these are 14 inch, three quarter inch white wall. So we had to get a hold of our our buddies down at Coker Tire and say, okay, help us out. And they were the only ones that had 14. Sorry about the noise. We're getting a, we're we're getting a thunderstorm coming through here. It's it happens. fitting for something else to kind of yeah. coming up. Hang in there. We're going to get over that shortly. So climate control in this, uh, we've got to replace that as well. What's happened to this guy, I guess, over time is you've got this message center here and get you down there so this has got all your computer stuff and this is uh, from 88 I mean that's pretty this is a high-tech dude for for the day so it has high speed and low speed but there's no normal oh wait no it comes up but it doesn't actually blow no so in order to repair the fact that it, we can't, you don't have medium speed on your uh, fan control, you gotta replace this whole outfit. So we found one and it's on its way here. So we're happy about that. And then, uh, yeah, and here's the new power antenna that uh, you can't get, you can't get the factory one. We looked everywhere, GM doesn't make them anymore. So this is a, an antenna from an aftermarket supplier. And it looks, it looks, it'll work and look just the same as the factory one. You just have to do a little bit of rewiring, but you won't be able to see it because in the trunk, it's all covered in carpet. Like these things are just, it's Cadillac, it's high end. Again, it's raining like crazy. Check out the window there. All right, we'll give you a little, little shot outside the shop door here. This is what's going on right now. That's hot, Mick. It's coming right in. And then once again, thanks oh, yeah. to thanks to Penny. <laughs> hot Rod and Customs. Yeah. So, tea storm, rainstorm. That's what's going on outside. So we're inside. We're going to stay uh, dry. And another thing that uh, was happening with this estate sale, they had uh, a bunch of stuff at this estate that the, uh, the owners were going through and they found uh, a couple of uh, a couple of pieces for the uh, for the T-Bird. So all of a sudden, uh, one of the owners came down and says, check this out, boys. Had a brand new fuel pump. Which we had, which we, which made it onto the parts list, which we have now removed from the parts list. So that's a win. That's a complete win. Um, another thing, a follow of ours, Greg from Homespun Tools, he's, uh, he's been in our area a little bit lately, and he dropped us off a shop manual for a 59 Thunderbird. This is a 56, but there's still a few things in here that we can probably still 
go back to. So, good, good reference guy. These absolutely. manuals are, they're infinitely handy. You can't, you know, some stuff, believe it or not, you can't find on the internet. Yeah. Uh, and thanks to some of our subs uh, for sending us uh, some comments explaining to us that this thing will only start when it's in neutral. Yeah. We thought the Solonid was buggered up. And I, I'm sorry I can't remember who said that, but I appreciate it. A few times. And uh, you know what? That's pretty cool. So we now we know that the starter solenoid isn't isn't uh, uh, broken. Starts in neutral, and it gave us a few other cool facts about you know things to watch out for with overheating. You figure the rads are undersized for the motor and things like that. Uh, once we get to putting in this new fuel pump, and we can run the motor for longer than you know two minutes or whatever, without having to feed it fuel like you saw in the other video. Then we'll set it up and we'll uh, let it warm up, take all the temps, and find out if uh, you know if that's true or not. And hopefully, this thing will be able to uh, keep itself cool because it's got a belt-driven fan, so that's always good, and a little bit of a shroud on it. But uh, yeah, this thing um, after the last video, you just saw it when we did the initial fire up, and it, it sputtered and farted around and wouldn't stay running. Uh, check it out now. It's <laughs> wow. Hang on. We got this. Mechanical <laughs> tack works. Still, so it's eventually going to run out of fuel, but sounds good though. And it's not nearly as smoky as it was. Well, oh, it's cleaned itself up quite a bit. <laughs> that runs nice. Still got a little bit of uh, sticky lifters, and you know it's run for 15 minutes or so in total. We got it. We got it up to one. Uh, uh, warmed it up to the point where the thermostat opened, got some cross flow through the rad, and then uh, we then we shut it off and let it heat sink or soak, pardon me. And uh, that's as far as we've gone with this at this point. So. That's an update on what's been happening with this. This is the three, I just want to let you guys know the three cars that, uh, that have come in from that estate stuff that we've been working on. And uh, we think it's pretty cool. We're very, we feel very blessed that they chose us yeah. to, to do all this work for them. And we're very grateful for that. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at with this situation. And like to, uh, just thanks for uh, all you new subs that have signed on to our channel. Really appreciate it. If you're if you're new here, you know, subscribe, hit the like bell, uh, notification. So we, when we put something new out, you guys get a get a whatever email or something that shows up on your phone, maybe through YouTube. It says, "Hey, we got something happening. Come check it out." And uh, yeah, appreciate the comments and all the likes and everything. And uh, Jeff's got something to chat with you guys about. We're gonna move over to another vehicle here. We can. Okay, so you've probably seen this one in the background. Uh, we've been working on this one for a while. We haven't posted anything on it, but this this used to be my truck. I, I purchased this in 97. My son, Logan, now owns it. And it's a 69 Chevy C10. He was having transmission and minor engine troubles with it. So I brought it back this past December, and I was going to put a, just put a different engine transmission in front. Well, it went way beyond that. I put a, uh, I put a 84 square body front suspension on it. So now he's got disc brakes, disc five bolt brakes in the front. We put three inch lowering coils on it. 
Three in the front, six in the back. Yeah. Uh, Here, I'm, I'm going to move over to the other side. We can see the control arm stuff. Yeah. So, so that's that's all 84 square body, bolted see? right in basically. Yeah, it did. And then uh, you get a sway bar when you do that switch over, which is really cool. Uh, initially, I was going to put a Gen 1 small block in it, but I'm like, nope. So it's got a 4.8 LS. Squirrels. Yeah, we got a 4.8 LS, 4L60 transmission. Uh, changed the rear diff as well. It's out of a 72 uh, Chevy truck, so it's five bolts as well. Had the cab right off, box right off. So frame's all been redone, painted up, all new bushings, everything in it. It's a nice looking patina truck. Yeah, he's a, he's a little, a little upset with himself because he's gotten rid of the uh, the gold paint that it came with, I'll paint it black. Take you down the side here a little bit. So we got a lot of paint mixed up that's fairly close. And of course, it's hard to match this because it's how many years of, of oxidization and whatnot. So this is what we got. It's a little bit shinier. I'm sure there's a way we can fade it out. But we're going to end up doing this. Well, actually, once Logan gets the truck back, he's going to look after that. Uh, he's going to go out to the interior. So, yeah, if you guys if you guys want to see anything more on this one, we've got some footage in the background. We just haven't really posted anything. So, yeah, it sits way better now, that's for sure. It's a little high in the front. He's probably going to want to put drop spindles in the front. Yeah, but we got it off the ground and it's on the hoist. So. It's sitting up on the hoist a little bit, but it, it does sit a little bit higher in the front. The collar cover for it. It's it's his uh, it's his baby. So. How old is Logan? Logan's 21. 21. It's a 21 year old truck with an LS. Yeah. Really? I didn't have an LS in it when I had it. Obviously. <laughs> that makes that makes for happy kids. <laughs> as long as he can pay the speeding tickets, he's gonna be okay. Exactly. So if you're new, subscribe, like, tell your buddies. Uh, send us your location because we're still obviously doing the map deal here and uh, We have to get some more pins sharpened we're up. Kind of, we're running out of pins, so I don't have everything updated um, Another thing I shot a sub tachometer We've actually We redlined this thing we're beyond so thank you guys so much for the thousand plus subs That means it just went crazy yeah, it's really awesome. So, it's really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for all the, like you said before, the comments and everything. And uh, we just wanted to give you an update of what's happening in the shop and tell you about the vehicles that are and the situation with these vehicles. And uh, let Jeff tell you about that beautiful seat tip. We'll be back later. Right thanks, on, guys. thanks for watching. Okay.